ان الحمد لله نحمد ونستعين ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله indeed all praise is due to allah and as such we should praise him seek his help and seek his forgiveness and seek refuge in allah from the evil which is within ourselves and the evil which results from our deeds for whomsoever Allah has guided, none can misguide. And whomsoever Allah has allowed to go astray, none can guide. And I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship but Allah, who is alone and without partner. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last messenger of Allah. In Asdaq al Hadith Kitab Allah, Wa Khair Hadi Hadi Muhammadin Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Wa Sharr al Umur Muhdathatuha, Wa Kulla Muhdathatin Bid'a, Wa Kulla Bid'atin Dolala, Wa Kulla Dolalatin Finnar. Indeed, the most truthful form of speech is the Book of Allah, the Quran. And the best source of guidance is the guidance brought by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Sunnah. And indeed, the worst of all affairs are the innovations in religion. For every innovation in religion is a cursed innovation. And all cursed innovation leads to misguidance. And all misguidance leads to the hellfire. My brothers and sisters, I advise you all and myself to fear Allah. To fear Allah in the open and in secret. To fear Allah with our families and with our friends. For the fear of Allah is the essence of faith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us in the Quran in Surah Al-Ma'idah or Surah Al-Hujurat إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةِ فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَ أَخَوَيْكُمْ Indeed, the believers are one brotherhood. So, Resolve what is between you, what is between your brothers. This verse from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins with affirming the brotherhood. The brotherhood of faith. It is Iman, faith, which joins us all together. It is Iman, faith in Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, which joins me 
with you. I am your brother in faith from the other side of the globe. Born in Jamaica, raised in Canada, but here I am in Uganda. I didn't come here for business. I came here to be with my brothers and sisters in faith for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is Iman which joins us all together. And it is Iman which joins us with all of the other Muslims around the world. We share a common belief in Allah, in His Messenger, in the angels, in the books, in the resurrection, in Qadr, that is what binds us together and as such brothers resolve the problems that happen between them when Allah said فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَ أَخَوَيْكُمْ resolve what is happening between your brothers this is telling us that it is inevitable that there will be differences amongst us. And the way in which we should deal with those differences is not to take sides, but to resolve those differences. Of course, taking sides may become inevitable when one of the sides refuses then we have to join with the other side to bring them to the table of reconciliation but this is our command to reconcile what is between us the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam differed and those differences reached the level of fighting between themselves in the time of Khalifa Ali ibn Abi Talib and Muawiyah radiallahu anhuma However, when it reached that level, they sought to resolve the problem between them. Because they knew that Muslims should not be fighting our fellow Muslims. Whatever the difference is, we should find ways of resolving them just as in our own families we differ with our brothers and with our sisters and for the most times we don't fight them we work out those differences our fathers our mothers intervene and help us to find ways of resolving those differences so in the same way you should hate fighting your brother who is your blood brother you should hate fighting your brother who is your brother in faith because faith ultimately is stronger than blood 
faith is stronger than blood. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, could not pray for his own father and his mother. He was not allowed to do so because they died in disbelief. That's blood. But he could pray for Ammar ibn Yasir, his father Yasir, and his mother, both of who were the first martyrs in Islam. So he could pray for Yasir even though he was not his blood brother. He prayed for him and he couldn't pray for his father. Not allowed by Allah SWT. Can we get a more clear message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the brotherhood of faith is superior to the brotherhood of blood? So Islam calls us to this brotherhood, the one of faith. And at the same time, Allah addresses some of the features in our society which leads to differences amongst us. One of the most common features is that of pride. Pride, the original sin. From the Islamic perspective, the original sin was not Adam's disobedience to Allah and eating from the tree. Adam and Eve eating from the tree according to Christian understanding that is the original sin. But for us that is not the original sin. The original sin was the sin of Iblis when he was commanded to bow before Adam in recognition of the superiority of Adam which Allah blessed him with his command to Iblis to bow was his test Iblis who was among the angels was elevated but when the test that test of faith came he failed he refused to bow and when he was asked by Allah why and Allah knew why he expressed Ana khairun minhu. I am better than him. Khalaqtani min narin wa khalaqtahu min teen. You made me from fire and you made him from clay. Fire in Iblis's mind was superior to clay. Because he felt that fire was superior to clay, he saw himself better and he disobeyed Allah. And in his disobedience to Allah, he implied that Allah had made a mistake. by claiming that the reason why he shouldn't bow to Adam is because he's superior to Adam it means then indirectly 
that Allah made a mistake in telling him who is superior to Adam to bow to Adam and this is the kufr this is where disbelief entered otherwise his disobedience was of no difference in value to Adam's disobedience in eating from the tree Allah told him not to eat and he ate he told him please to bow and he didn't bow if he had left it at that it would have been the same repentance would clear it end of story but he went further he questioned Allah's judgment so that sin which was driven by what by pride that sin was the original sin that is the sin which preceded the sin of Adam's in, in disobedience and that is the same sin which arises amongst us and causes us to split our ranks we can't accept one leader because we think we are better than that leader we fight amongst ourselves because we feel our family or our tribe or our, our, our organization is better it should lead so we look down on the other organization but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in surah al-hujurat told us very clearly ya ayyuha alladhina amanu la yaskhar qawmun min qawm asa an yakunu khayran minhum do not O oh, you who believe scorn look down on one people over another because it may be that Allah has made that people better than the other you think yourself to be better but in fact Allah has made them better it is not befitting for us as Muslims to look down on our fellow Muslim so in order to further emphasize the importance of this brotherhood which shouldn't be broken by pride or desire for power or any of the other desires Allah said inna hadhihi ummatukum ummatan wahida wa ana rabbukum fa'budun indeed this ummah this nation this ummah here this nation is one Muslim nation and I Allah said I'm your Lord so worship me this is the essence of our faith we worship Allah in worshiping him we affirm that we are that one brotherhood which makes us one nation worshiping Allah alone we are one brotherhood we are one nation and we have 
only one Lord as there is one God one human race one religion we should worship that one true God Allah together and we should worship none besides him I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta to bring this realization of the brotherhood back into our hearts into our minds and into our community and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta to forgive our sins in looking down at our brothers and sisters and splitting our ranks and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta to guide us to Sirat al Mustaqim, Sirat al Ladina and Amta Alehim, Ghair al Maghdubi Alehim, Waladalin. That path which is one path based on our faith. I ask Allah to forgive our parents who have passed away and our relatives and our friends to make their graves gardens from paradise rather than pits from hell aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sari al-muslimin min kulli dham fastaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafur al-rahim الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. All praise is due to Allah and may Allah's peace and blessings be on the last messenger of Allah. So having pointed out to us that we are one brotherhood, that we are one ummah, Allah commanded us to hold on to what we share what is the only basis for that brotherhood the only basis for our unity he said Hold on firmly to the rope of Allah all together and do not split up. The rope of Allah is the Quran and the Sunnah. This is the rope of Allah. This is what binds us together that we are committed to the Quran and the Sunnah we resolve our differences for Udduhu ilallahi wa Rasul we resolve our differences by taking whatever we disagree on back to the Quran and to the Sunnah this is the base by which we can resolve our differences because if we are to leave the resolution of differences to our opinions to our personal wisdom we will fail we will fail and that is why Allah told us ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wal mawidati al hasana that we call to the way of our Lord not to the way of our forefathers not to the way of our traditions and customs but to the way of our Lord that way is the Quran and the Sunnah inseparable anyone who says I only follow the Quran we cannot be unified with them 
Because if they say they only follow the Quran, Quraniyun, then they have rejected the Sunnah. And not only have they rejected the Sunnah, they have in fact rejected the Quran. Because Allah clearly states in the Quran, "May yuti'ur Rasul." Allah. Whoever obeys the messenger has obeyed Allah. How can you obey the messenger when you have rejected the sunnah? You can't. And that is why our unity, our brotherhood, depends on accepting the Quran and the Sunnah and that is why the Prophet ﷺ further told us تَرَكْتُ فِيكُمْ أَمْرَيْنْ إِنْ تَمَسَّكْتُمْ بِهِمَا فَلَنْ تَضِلُّ abada. I've left with you two things if you hold on firmly to them you will never go astray the Book of Allah and my Sunnah the book of Allah and my sunnah. That is the basis of the unity and the brotherhood. However, there is one more concept that we need to be clear on. And that regards the book of Allah and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is, how do we understand the book of Allah and the Sunnah? If we are to understand the book of Allah and the Sunnah, according to your opinion, my opinion, his and his, then we will be lost. While holding on to the Quran and the Sunnah, we will end up fighting each other, splitting our ranks, Because holding on to the book of Allah and the Sunnah must be in the way that Rasulullah wasallam and his companions held on to it. We must follow the understanding which the companions of the Prophet wasallam understood. We must follow their understanding. If it is left up to you and me, one person told me, celebration of the Prophet Sallallahu birthday is in the Quran. I said, yeah. I've read the whole Quran a number of times. I don't recall seeing any verse which says, celebrate the Prophet Sallallahu birthday. He said, didn't you read the verse? The verse which states, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi Ya ayu alladheena amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Didn't you read that verse? I said, yes. But where does it say, celebrate the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's birthday? He said, that's exactly what it says. So I said, well, uh, the Sahaba didn't celebrate his birthday. And they knew that verse. So what are you telling me now? That you have understood that verse better than the Sahaba? A'udhu Billah. Or that the Sahaba knew the verse and what it meant and they didn't follow it? A'udhu Billah! The understanding of the Sahaba is what preserves the Quran and the Sunnah for us. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu when he was asked after saying that Muslims will divide up into 73 different sects. 
72 of them headed for hell and one alone going to paradise he was asked what is that one O messenger of Allah he said Ma ana alayhi wa ashabi. what I am following and what my companions are following he didn't just say what I'm following he said what I'm following and what my companions are following they were the best of generations and he said it the best of generations are my generation then those who come after them then those who come after them the tabi'un and the tabi'ut tabi'in he spoke of those three generations first and foremost the best was that of his sahaba so obviously their understanding of the Quran and the Sunnah must be the correct understanding so when the Ahmadiyya the Qadianis who believe in a prophet after Muhammad by the name of Mirza Ghulam Ahmed born in India back in the 1800s when they say that he is a messenger after Rasulullah and we say to them but Allah said in the Quran describing the Prophet Muhammad as being Khatamun Nabiyyin Khatamun Nabiyyin the seal of the prophethood they said actually Khatam means seal yes but it also means ring the ring you wear on your finger is khatam and as the ring on your finger beautifies your finger Muhammad وسلم, was the beautification of the prophethood not the seal Arabic you go back to the dictionary you'll find yeah it's true in Arabic yes khatam also means ring so is it ring or is it seal the end when Musaylama al kathab Musaylama claimed that he was a prophet after Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu what did the Sahaba do say oh yes the Muhammad Sallallahu was the seal it was not the seal he was the the uh, beautification of the prophethood so we can accept Musaylama is that what happened if you know the history of the Khulafa Rashidun you know that Abu Bakr led the Muslim army to kill Musaylama al kathab to kill him why because he said he was a prophet after Muhammad Sallallahu so can Khatam mean ring in the Quran in this context no it means seal the last and of course there are many hadiths of the Prophet ﷺ. he said La ba'di. there is no messenger coming after me end of story the Sahaba understood it he was the last of the prophets so anyone who claimed prophethood and there were others there was the last word al anasi in Yemen they fought him and killed him there was Sajah a female prophet they fought her until she surrendered and converted to Islam gave up her prophethood so it is the understanding of the Sahaba which gives us clarity as to the teachings of the Quran and the Sunnah so we must commit ourselves to that understanding and there are those who say actually splitting up is not really a bad thing there is a hadith 
which Prophet Sallallahu said, Ikhtilaf Ummati Rahma. Ikhtilaf Ummati Rahma. The differences amongst my Ummah is a mercy. Sounds nice. But it is in contradiction to the Quran itself. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran said, Wala takunu min al mushrikeen. Don't be from among the idol worshippers, the disbelievers. Min al ladina farraku dinahum. From those who split up their religion, wa kanu shia. And they were into sects, the Shia. So Allah is cursing those people who split up, differed and split up the religion into sects. It's not a mercy. It is a curse. So, we are one brotherhood. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَى فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَ أَخَوَيْكُمْ Indeed, the believers are one brotherhood. So resolve the differences among you, between you. This is the guidance of the Quran, the guidance of the Sunnah, and the understanding of the Sahaba. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us on that guidance until we meet him to make our last breath in this life la ilaha illallah to bring our families along with us into paradise to bring all those who preceded us and all those coming after us from the ummah to paradise along with us O oh Allah forgive our transgressions our negligence our ignorance our disobedience and make us true believers deserving of your paradise Amin Aqimus Salah Seeking knowledge and obligation made easy thought about studying for a long time Tuition fees keeping you from actually starting? Islamic Online University has led a revolution in online learning. The world's first tuition free degree, BA in Islamic Studies. Access to the knowledge, any place, anytime, anywhere. It just doesn't get any easier than that. Classes, texts, assignments, completely online. Set your own schedule for the semester. No overseas travel required for the exams. Subjects taught by qualified English-speaking scholars. Weekly live sessions in virtual classrooms. With curricula based on those in El Medina University in Saudi Arabia, El Azhar University in Cairo, and other reputable institutions around the world. Why wait any longer? You pay just a symbolic registration fee and are ready to begin the adventure of higher education. The most diverse student body of any university in the world. 130,000 plus registered students from 217 countries. Log in to the website for more details. www.islamiconlineuniversity.com